Hey guys, so I, I feel like I'm going to re regret doing this video because A, this tag is super super old now and B, it's been ages since I've done like a proper eyeshadow, like this, what I've got on my face right now is the first time in like six months that I've done a full face of makeup, um, I mean I, I have worn eyeshadow a little bit but I, I don't know in general I have not been wearing makeup much at all thanks to the current pandemic and I just haven't really been bothered uh, wearing much makeup considering I only leave the house for groceries in the gym at the moment so yeah anyway uh, I'll just get started with this with this tag the reason why I started the intro the way I did is because uh, it has been some time since I have bought makeup in general so the first question is the newest what is your newest eyeshadow palette now I bought this I ordered this on the 30th of July 2020 so yeah about six months ago um, I ordered this and this is the I Love Sade E and Colourpop Through My Eyes palette this came out it was either 2018 or 2019 and it seems to I don't think they've officially discontinued it it's interesting because I've seen it go out of stock and then back in stock so I don't know if they're officially still making it I haven't used this yet but um, yeah I can't wait to use it soon see if it's worth the hype when it first came out uh, in 2018 and 2019 I wasn't really gonna I didn't know if I'd get it or not but um, I can see that the people who have bought it or who do own it they all agree that it's that's fantastic so I'll um, I have to give it a go and just make sure it's worth the hype. <laughs> okay, next next is oldest that I still have in my collection. So um, it, it's a tie between the Nakeds 1 and 2. I did order these at the same time. This must have been, I want to say 2013. or so. That's a cr crazy long time ago. Um, I still have them. They're collector's items at this point. They still work very well. I only use them on myself. I don't use my makeup on anyone else. If they still perform well, I store them in a cool, dark place. So uh, personally, I feel like they'll probably last, you know, like another seven or eight years. The other item that's almost as old or because I can't I'm not quite sure if I got the naked palettes before this or this before the naked palettes and this is the Maybelline ICO uh, color explosion mini palette in caffeine rush I absolutely love this and I still use it from time to time it's great for creating a beautiful brown smoky eye I'm not even sure if Maybelline still do these types of mini palettes anymore but if they do like the quality is really good for drugs drugstore and this one in particular is actually quite pigmented so um, I'm glad I still have this one in my collection. Next is most expensive. Um, now I'm just going to put the text here uh, showing the dollar value because I can't quite remember off the top of my head how expensive this was. But it's the Natasha Denona Star Palette. So this is how it looks. I know that there was a lot of hype over this palette because at this stage uh, Natasha Denona's big palettes uh, was the browns and greens and the purples and blues and after that this was the first palette she released where I personally I feel the colors are more wearable and every day I was tossing up whether or not I get the green and brown palette because the browns looked beautiful but I just knew I would never use the greens so I loved how she released a, a palette that was um, a mixture of warm and cool tone neutrals or every maybe they're not so much neutrals you do have a few pops of color here and there but there are colors that you can wear on the daily and would suit many skin tones as well so yeah really really love that and I'll definitely be hanging on to it least expensive now this is almost empty so this isn't a very good um, <laughs> uh, example but this was is slash was the wet and wild color icon in walking on eggshells uh, so I don't know if it, if a trio um, counts as a as a palette uh, but this is the cheapest palette of sorts in my collection this was I believe three dollars I believe they still make the color icons however they have changed the packaging and the layout of the shadows instead of three you get four now uh, they and you can still get walking on eggshells there's an extra shade in it I think they're still around three dollars for the best everyday palette I'm gonna have to go with the Anastasia Beverly Hills soft glam palette uh so yeah cult favorite um i remember when this came out i i'll admit i didn't think because i i knew firsthand like the second this dropped i knew i wanted to get my hands on it 
and it's funny because I, I thought that because um, at the time this came out there were neutral palettes everywhere a lot of like browns and bronzes like because we had the naked palettes we had um, Tarte bringing out like neutral palette after neutral palette um, just just heaps and heaps of brands were just bringing out palettes like not that much different to this one really and you know after I placed my order for this I was, I was just thinking to myself people are gonna think this is so boring they're gonna think oh no not another neutral palette there's already like 50 on the market right now the popularity surrounding this took off like even though it was you know it was a neutral palette that came out at a time where neutral palettes were everywhere and everyone had one at this stage or had or in my case I had like 20. Yeah no people still went nuts for it. This has almost become like the unofficial wedding day eyeshadow palette as well like a lot of brides go for this for their wedding day so it, it's it's interesting like I, I kind of felt like ABH were taking a bit of a gamble releasing this at the time that they did but it, it ended up working in their favor and I don't think there's a single person who's bought from ABH that doesn't own this palette like if basically if you're gonna buy one thing from ABH it's gonna be this palette I feel like that's what this palette is all about most colorful now so currently I'm gonna have to give it to the sugar pill fun sized palette this is so adorable I love the 8-bit cat on the front and I love the gaming references on the inside and it's just a nice rainbow palette but it's also a mini version so it's not too overwhelming um, I really want to do a look with this palette I actually haven't used this palette yet but I'm really excited to I think it just looks so pretty I like I'm too scared to dip my brush in and, and ruin it <laughs> now smallest and biggest palettes for this one I decided to go with uh, the net weight as in the weight of the product not so much the size of the physical palette itself because you know looks can be deceiving smallest palette net weight I own is the the face shop coca-cola eyeshadow palette this is a Korean beauty brand so that's what it looks like on the inside um, fairly pigmented eyeshadows uh, for a Korean brand um, and I think that this is this is nice and sturdy. It's nice and little. It's perfect for travel and you've got some neutrals there and a pop of red um, Yeah, so very cute small palette biggest ones I have to give to my these are heavy as well to my uh, ABH Norvina palettes. I'm sure you all know what they look like, but let's just open them up now These I'll admit that so beautiful. I haven't used these yet either like that's that's why I was hesitant about filming this video because not only have I not purchased eyeshadow in a while or even worn eyeshadow much at all in the year 2020. These are two palettes that I bought in the year 2020 and I still like look that's it's untouched yet and um, it's really really bad. Uh, but I mean I'm, I'm thankful that I haven't bought any makeup since, since July 2020. Palette with the best memory. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give that to the Tarte Tartlet in Bloom palette uh, and mainly it's because of uh, when I bought it so I bought this um, on my first trip to Sydney as in the first time I'd gone to Sydney and you know and I wasn't just at the airport I sort of have memories of it because I was with my family it was during Easter 2016 and yeah we just had a great time you know doing all the touristy things uh, it was also the very first time I'd set foot in in a Sephora because when Sephora first came to Australia it was only in Sydney I think in 2016 uh, a Sephora had opened in Melbourne however I hadn't been to it yet because I think it might have I think the first Melbourne Sephora might have opened in 2016 the very start of 2016 I could be getting that wrong but I still hadn't had the time to go down and check it out yet so I was just so happy to set foot inside of Sephora so yeah so this sort of represents my first time in Sephora and my first time to Sydney worth the hype this was a tough one because I did have a few options but I decided to go with um, Old Faithful Modern Renaissance by ABH I mean people went off when this dropped because I think it was a new look at the neutral palette because I think Urban Decay had sort of set the standard for neutral palettes with their naked with the nakeds one and two uh, but then this sort of opened up the idea of the idea that a neutral palette can also have some pinks and some burgundies in it as well and still be considered neutral still be considered everyday and wearable 
and I think Anastasia with this palette is around the time this palette came out I think everybody was obsessed with buying single eyeshadows in my opinion because I know that Makeup Geek single shadows had taken off at the time uh, I believe this palette came out before Colourpop did because I know that Colourpop ended up releasing their own singles. Like Colourpop basically became Makeup Geek's biggest competitor and then a lot of people started going to Colourpop for single shadows because they were about the same price if not a tiny bit cheaper than what Makeup Geek was selling their single shadows as. Because I agree with um, what some people have, are saying about this palette that this was a turning point that people started going to curated palettes for you know, their new, their, for their ideal neutral everyday palette and we were starting to move away from buying singles. I, st I personally still love singles. I hope they'll make a comeback one day because I still buy them. I mean, it's an icon. Like, again, if you're, if you're gonna buy two palettes from ABH, make the first one soft glam and the second one modern re renaissance. Okay, not worth the hype. I hope nobody hates me for saying this, but hear me out. Okay, so um, don't get me wrong, this is adorable, like absolutely adorable. I think it's incredible that Sephora and Moschino did a collection together. However, the reason why, in my opinion, it's not worth the hype isn't the packaging itself. Obviously, the packaging is where it's at. Um, this is something you definitely want to display on your vanity or display somewhere in your room or just generally where you do your makeup, but that's all it is. It's not... Um, like, yes, the colors are beautiful, but I just don't reach for this. Um, I've used it once, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I don't like the layout. Obviously, the layout is in the shape of a bear because it has to be. I don't know if it's the, the color story. Um, I don't know if it's simply because it's cumbersome and it's a little bit heavy to, and awkward to hold as you're doing your makeup, but I don't know. Like, I just use this... I mean, at the moment it's sitting in my drawer because I haven't decided where I want to display it, but I will dis display it somewhere eventually. But that's all this is going to be. This is a this is a fancy, overhyped, dust collecting paperweight. That's that's all of this. <laughs> favorite palette from a favorite brand. Ah, oh, I feel like I'm alone in saying this, but even though Urban Decay has kind of fallen below the radar in recent years, I still love and reach for their shadows all the time. I have a bunch of their singles. The quality really is there. I don't know why people seem to think it's not. People seem to think that Urban Decay eyeshadows aren't that good, but they, they really, really are. I know there are a couple of shades out there that are a bit um, hit and miss, but overall, like I love, like I'm wearing, this is a palette I've got on my eyes. This is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. Um, so I've got it on my eyes, like the colors just blended out so well. Um, this, this is a palette I was tossing out whether or not to put it in the worth the hype because I know that everybody went nuts with this palette when it came out. Um, and yeah, the only reason I decided not to include it was because after it came out, a lot of people thought it wasn't worth the hype because there aren't enough matte shades. And I mean, personally, I mean, I've got it on my eyes, and you guys can tell me what you think. I might zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see. But I did use some of the darker shades, because, um, yeah, the, the five darkest shades in this palette, they're all either a satin or a shimmery finish. But, you know, like, I don't know, I, you guys be the judge. Do you think the outer corner of my eye makeup looks, you know, not really put together because it's they're not matte shadows, they're shimmery shadows. I just think the palette's very pretty. It's a perfect date night. Um, color story and I do think that there are lots of looks that you can you know you can make with this and I think the shades are just very flattering the formula is good they're pigmented they blend out really really nicely okay, last but not least is most used I have to give it to the I love Saturday E slash Colourpop Shiki palette um, I did have to think about that for a, for a sec because as you can see it's not in its packaging I decided to put them into this Anastasia Beverly Hills empty quad uh, just because um, It's more sturdy than the cardboard packaging and it was also easier to travel with I took this with me to India in 2019 um, And I just knew I didn't have to worry about any of the shadows shattering and it also takes up less space in my luggage I just absolutely like this is the this is like my go-to this is if if I want to travel light um, if I have no idea what 
eye makeup to do I always go to the like this is this just fits everything it's travel friendly it's beginner friendly it, it's every day it's day to night it's oh I just can't say enough good things about this palette like this is holy grail status I've actually bought myself a backup of this quad because I, I mean I've hit pan on two shades so I think that's justified it's just you know they don't color pop don't make it anymore I think they're crazy because of that because it's just the quintessential staple palette it oh, I'm holding it up again I keep <laughs> I'll just keep holding it up so you can see you know it's it's just perfect for me um I guess the only downside I can think of is that it may not suit people with really dark skin tones but this shimmer is beautiful and I do think it, it's the type of shimmer that looks good on all skin tones so yeah this was my take on the palette tag hope you all enjoyed this video thanks again for watching and I will be talking to you again in my next video